But I don't think he got it right, but okay. <laughs> Good The full of money part, I don't think he got it right, but okay. <laughs> Good morning, Dubai. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great day and a great event so far, and I hope to make it a little bit more interesting today. This is my mission. Today, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about all the lessons we learned over mentoring and coaching, basically over 100 D2C e-com companies. We learned the metrics to successfully scale, that we call the product market fit KPIs, and also how to build a content machine that will fuel all this growth. But before we get to that, let's have a little bit of introduction. So my name is Leonardo Caracas. You can call me Leo. I am a Brazilian international. I was born and raised in Brazil. Uh, traveled the whole world. <laughs> Good one. Uh, lived even in the Emirates as well, a couple of years. But now I'm based in the Netherlands. I'm also someone that uh, loves adventures, loves to get new people, to see new people, see new places, get to new experiences. And I have the biggest adventure of my life, which is at home. I'm the father of three beautiful girls. This is one that I love to take on every day. Uh, I'm also on a mission, and this is the mission of Jump Ventures. We help companies get to hyper growth. But who is Jump Ventures? Jump Ventures is an accelerator slash investor into D2C e-com businesses. And this was born out of a passion project where we were in a time of our lives where we wanted to give back and help young companies, uh, young founders, first-time founders, to see how they could scale their businesses to new heights. And this was a, a mentoring and coaching program we developed two to three years ago. We still do that up today, and this was the start of Jump Ventures. It brought in uh, our experience from running our own brands, from getting mentored by other uh, successful entrepreneurs that were in a different scale at the time, and we were be able to apply to these companies. It brought our growth hacking culture and our growth mindset of how to push the boundaries with minimal effort, but trying to get maximum impact. And it's also uh, very focused on D2C e-com, but we don't see it uh, that it cannot be applied to. It applies to all the markets and other types of products. And for us, it's always looking how are we going to do the next jump, the next big thing, the next leap. Well, how do we do it? Basically, in 2015, we started our first uh, e-com uh, successful company called GoCase. We had a beautiful journey. We still have it. It started back in Brazil. We grew this uh, company quite a lot uh, in a bootstrap way, reached eight figures within three years created factories around the world, a workforce, and we were able to try a thousand things and commit several mistakes. That basically allowed us to understand, out of a thousand things we tried, what is the subset of things that really move the needle? What are the things that move mountains in terms of results? And this is when we develop a playbook that we use to scale all the companies that uh, we touch, that we mentor, that we coach. It's a simple playbook, it's a simple process, but it takes a lot of effort to try to implement it Make sure you're taking the right steps, and make sure you can be consistent throughout the year. I'm going to go over very quickly around the different steps of the process, and we're going to focus on one of the steps today. So we start with a growth strategy. We think how a business that is around six figures, so perhaps almost a million dollars, can 10x in one year. So this is what we do at Jump Ventures. We take six figures brands, and we transform them into eight-figure businesses. Uh, we think about the e-com, the tech stack, the business model, and the products they have right now and see how can we 10x this in one year. We then build a content machine to constantly spit out impactful content that will drive results very fast. Then we move to a commercial plan, which is just a way for us to have something new to say to new customers, to current customers, via the merchandising, a new product, a new feature, just something that we can put it in a calendar and push it throughout the year. Financial structure is also very important. How to optimize cash flow, how to optimize the PL to make sure that you can grow sustainably. Then we have the data and the tech stack. How do we take informed decisions with a data mindset? So how do we fix the reporting, the attribution, the applications that are going to support the growth? And last but not least, how to internationalize these companies if we deem that their market is too small, has a cap, or there's an easy opportunity to go to a neighboring country and reach amazing results. Today, we're going to focus on the content strategy and how to build a, a machine. 
But before we do that, we had this beautiful experience and journey of uh, being in touch with several founders from different, different countries, different products that tried to get mentoring and coaching with us. And we were able to be in touch with them and help them uh, in a certain way, structure, scale, and even significantly get to, to a new level. Uh, and we can summarize the learnings of these 100 plus D2C brands in five points. And this is basically the journey that every entrepreneur goes through. Some learn faster than others, some get exposed to other things, to some topics faster than others. But basically, if you're a first time founder, this is the first time you are trying to scale a company, you're going to have to pass through these steps. If we think about these five biggest learnings, and we're going to talk about two of them today. First is about reaching product market fit. If you don't have product market fit, and we're going to get into detail about what product market fit means for us, you're really not going to achieve growth. You don't have a solid basis to actually grow sustainably. Second, you cannot scale without good unit, unit economics. It's not going to be financially profitable and scalable. So you really need to make sure you're optimizing your financials for success. Third, you need a content machine, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Fourth, you need a commercial calendar, constantly spitting out different messages, new messages to your base on a frequent basis throughout the year. And fifth, this is actually the, the, the most important one for the day to day, is focus on minimum effort, maximum impact activities. So things that can really move the needle, and it's not getting overwhelmed by other things you can do, should do, would do, but it's really understanding what costs the least amount of time, least amount of money, least amount of people involved, has the highest probability to achieve financial impact, and can be validated in one day, one week, maximum one month. Yeah? If we need to get tactical for those learnings, what we tell our fellow founders is try to tackle the problems like this. It's very simple in our, in our, in our mind, and you have seen a lot of speakers talk about this, but you need to understand your customers, why they bought, and why they would buy it again. And we're going to get to some examples here how you can do that, but it's as simple as this, why they bought and why they would buy it again. Second, fix your shipping costs, your COGS, your payroll, and your fixed costs, so you're actually asset light. You don't have a heavy ship to steer and try to grow at the same time. Third, and this is a rule of thumb, just so you get into the rhythm of creating a content machine, spit out at least 25 creatives per week. Fourth, plan to release something every two weeks. If you force yourself to have a new message for your base every two weeks that sounds new, be it a feature, a new community, new product, new add-on, you're going to get to the, to the rhythm of increasing or having revenue bumps every two weeks, and you're going to learn a lot of things. And later in the last one, which is the minimum effort, maximum impact, and a lot of people overlook this, how important it is to heavily iterate on pricing. Uh, it's impressive how much you can achieve by just trying to find a sweet spot price for your product, increasing or decreasing the price by 10%, 5%, doing bundles, doing upsells. This is the way you can achieve a lot of impact with minimum effort. So let's get into product market fit. What do we think product market fit means, and how do we find it? For us, it's a simple formula. And we take these four KPIs to try to understand. First, reviews, 4.7 out of 5 or above. So this just means that people are saying that they love the product, they love the experience, and they would like to come back. If you have a 4, a 3.9, a 4.2, there's something wrong. There's something in the experience that is not quite there yet, be it the shipping, be it the quality. But when you try to scale it, you're going to come back and forth because you have something wrong. Second, repurchase rate above 30%. This is your fat layer of profitability. This is how you constantly monetize on your current customers, and you make sure that you don't leave money on the table because trying to acquire new customers every month is really not sustainable. Third, AOV, and this is much because of the landscape we have now to grow companies on the back of paid, uh, paid media like Facebook and TikTok. You need to have an AOV that is above 50. If it's below, it's very hard to try to be profitable. And if you don't have 50 right now, it's OK, but you need to come up with a plan to constantly release products, constantly release add-ons that will help you get to this 50. 75, we think, is a sweet spot. You get a lot of uh, profitability out of that. But 50 is just a rule of thumb. If you make around 1 million revenues, if you have 
around uh, uh, $50 AOV. Then we move into the last KPI, which is conversion rate. We talk about 3%, but it's for these type of figures. When you have a conversion rate for a small store that makes below 1 million, then we should expect 3% conversion rate. If you are around 1%, 1.5%, it gets increasingly hard to go to the next level. Because once you start pushing things with paid media, it will become very difficult to actually be uh, uh, generating conversions all the time. So we know where scale comes from and its product market fit. Now, throughout this presentation, I'm going to give you some golden nuggets or things that I can really uh, advise you to try immediately tomorrow, and you might see already a big performance increase. The first golden nugget is about knowing your customer and know your customer with AI. So this has been transformational to our day activities and how we actually get to get better at conversion. Um, and basically, it's a exercise where you grab all the feedback, qualitative feedback you have on reviews, pre-purchase surveys, post-purchase surveys, Facebook comments, whatever may be it. And you upload this to chatpdf.com or chatgpt itself, and you start asking questions. It's like having a conversation with 10,000 customers at the same time. And you basically were able to process a lot of qualitative data. So you start asking, OK, what are people saying are the USPs of the product? Why did they bought in the first place? Why would they buy it again? What do they think about the price? What do they think about the competition? OK, let's think about the use case. If I have all, this, if I have all these reviews, can you compile this into one single review that talks about all the USPs, all the pain points, and how we're solving them? OK, I have this review. Can you turn this into an ad script? OK, can you turn this into an ad script of five scenes? Can you turn this into an ad script that's a little bit more informal? Can, not, can you now give me 10 ad headlines? So with this, if you think about the use cases you need to figure out within your company and knowing your customers is going to be the base of it, having qualitative uh, content like feedback uh, and reviews is really important. Once you do this, you do the same for your competition. You grab softwares like Octoparse, and you script the competitor's reviews on Trustpilot, Judge, Judge Me, and Looks, and you do the same exercise. And you're going to learn why people love that product, why would they buy it again, or why they don't like the product at all. So scale starts with product market fit, and if you don't have a solid basis, growth is not going to be fun. Trust me, we did it before. I had to go back and forth. And once you have product market fit, it's just another, it's a completely different path. Now let's talk about the content machine. And to illustrate the content machine, I'm going to revert back to a use case we had a couple of years back, where we grabbed the company and we were able to increase this company from a 1 million standpoint to a 20 million standpoint within one year. Yeah? And to do that, we used this process. Again, it's a simple process, takes a lot of hard work, takes a lot of effort to implement and to be consistent with it. But we start with creative assets, having a strategy to constantly find ways to get assets, raw material, be it with influencers, customers, AI, your internal product team. But these assets are later going to be developed in concepts, creative concepts. As we search them, problem solution, testimonials. And once you have enough concepts, once you have enough finalized assets, you're going to test and iterate them. You're going to put them all to battle. And I'm talking about hundreds. I'm not talking about 10, 5. I'm talking about hundreds of pieces of content to find which one have the best early funnel KPIs, CPC, CTR, CPM, because this is your best bet on a scaling mode. If you find the ones who have the best early funnel, they are your best bet to get the cheapest CPA, the cheapest cost per purchase. And this is what we call the hit content. Once you found the hit content, which has the best early funnel KPIs, you then scale it to the max, you get great results, and you go back to the process with insights of why did it work, how did it work, how can you iterate, how can you get back at doing this over and over again. So this is the machine, and it's a process. It's simple, but it takes a lot of effort to implement it. To illustrate that 1 to 20 million use case, and we put things on a timeline, we were just adjusting the four KPIs of uh, product market fit to see that we were going in the right direction. But if you see the yellow line from that part on, 
you see that once we start implementing the content machine and having really the right content to be displayed, we got an amazing scale, an exponential scale that even in the last month was almost 6 million in, in one month, going all the way from a 50K standpoint. And this is illustrated with this graph where we show exactly how did it come to me, and this is about the content quality. So you can see on the top graph how we increased spend like crazy in the last months, maintaining a very good CPA, which is even better than the months before. But this was really possible because of the quality of the content. CPMs drop, which means CPCs drop, which means we can have even cheaper CPAs. So because of this quality, we're able to get results like this, which show the quality of the content here, double thumb stop rate, double video completion rate, which in turn give us way better cost per uh, 1,000 people reach, which in turn give us better CPC. So we have the same spent from a month before to a month after, getting way more impact, way more traffic. But how does this come to be? It's the hit content. What is the hit content? It's the total outlier in your testing campaign that shows the best early funnel KPIs. So if you see that, I think there's over 900 ads in this, uh, um, in this overview here. And you see the average is quite low. But if you see the top one, this is multiple times better than the average. This is multiple times better in terms of CPC, in terms of CTR. So this is your best bet to scale. And once you find that hit content, you start trying to understand from all your testing and iteration how you can create more, how you can look at CPMs, thumb stop rate, video completion rate, CTR, CPC, and see what are the strengths of all the different types of content. You mix them all together, and we call it you create a Frankenstein content. But this gives you the ability to constantly iterate and create more hits so that your average in the end of the day and have multiple ads that after they go through this process, they get to another level, is a complete different uh, picture than that was before. So your average is in a complete different level in terms of thumb stop, CTR, CPC, and enable us to get the results that we got before. If we need to get a little bit visual now, and I'm going to give you examples of how we did it with video and with photos. We did that big test and iteration phase, tested a lot of different creatives, and uh, found one from an influencer, which was a two-minute narrative talking about all the USPs and talking about all the problem and solution uh, aspects of the product. I'm not going to play it here because it's too long, but I'm going to play the next iteration, which is us thinking about how do we make this um, how do we replicate this? How do we recycle it? It was a two-minute video. Let's make it shorter. Make sure that we have the right uh, uh, messages in place that will convert people still. And this is what we come back with. Hit 1.1. I've never used a crochet kit like this before. Once I scanned the QR code, this is what I found. The fact that they started out for you makes it super easy. If this is your first time crocheting, they have video tutorials for every single step. They made this yarn. It's called Easy Peasy Yarn. It is perfect for beginner crocheters. Overall, I genuinely do love this product. Bam. A lot of impact, very minimal effort, understanding what worked, why it worked, and then trying to recycle it. And we thought back, OK. We test a lot of videos. We have a lot of footage. There's good stuff there. How can we replicate the same thing? Let's recycle the narrative. Let's grab the, the other good footage and another good product that is a bestseller. And then kabam, hit 2.0. Never used a crochet kit like this before. Once I scanned the QR code, this is what I found. The fact that they started out for you makes it super easy. If this is your first time crocheting, they have video tutorials for every single step they made this yarn. It's called Easy Peasy Yarn. It is perfect for beginner crocheters. Overall, I genuinely do love this product. So with these short iterations and thinking like this all the time, we're able to recycle content, think about the next jump, think about the 1.1 small variation, the 2.0 bigger variation, and consistently do this month over month. Now when we do this with pictures, you do the same test iteration phase, hundreds of uh, different products, hundreds of different layouts, and then we find the one which is the outlier. Highest CTR by far, lowest CPC. What are we going to do with it? OK, easy one, change the background, find the best colors. We found these two colors. I have to say, it was not amazing. It was OK. So we looked back, came back to the drawing board, said, what, what else can we do? OK, let's keep the purple. Let's see how else we can change the picture. 
create two new layouts, which were really working well. And then we definitely create a new format for this type of brand. And then we went back and said, OK, this was amazing. How can we do it again? Okay, let's do a purple product in a purple background. And we created one for this, uh, for this event, and it was quite a bang. But just thinking uh, 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 with small ideas, you are able to really get to the next stage. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not about reinventing the wheel all the time. Now, some golden nuggets about uh, content creation. We have a testing campaign solely with the purpose of finding the best thumb stop rates, the best hooks, because they will define a lot of the success of the creative. I, I'm sure you heard this from other, sp other speakers in the affiliate world. So we have a testing campaign that we have videos of three seconds, five seconds, eight seconds, just to see which ones have the highest CTR and highest thumb stop rates. And one of our uh, uh, mentored companies applied this, uh, this um, strategy, and this is what they are able to do. As two brothers who started a chai company, could our viral chai mix pass the grandmother test? Here's why tea and coffee lovers are going crazy over this holiday gift bundle. The secret behind this tiny chai cafe in New York City that every celebrity is obsessed with. Why is it so hard finding a strong, delicious cup of chai? I've tried so many masala teas, but they just don't cut it. Fall is coming, so here's how to pick the right chai for your wellness routine. I love chai, but I don't love how much sugar it comes with. Finding the right chai from a morning routine has been impossible. I just dumped out 42 grams of sugar from my morning chai latte. So we find the best hooks. And what we do is plug the hooks with a story that really converts, that we tested before. And then we con continuously do that by just refreshing the hooks. So after they did this, they put the hit formula. And this is what came out of. I just dumped out 42 grams of sugar from my morning chai lattes. Sea shop chai lattes have a disgusting amount of sugar because of all the artificial syrups and concentrates they use. I was looking for a sugar-free chai option and found one from this small family. So you get the point. Next one, how to create assets with AI photo assets with AI. This has been transformative as well. It's a hack. We do it day after day and has allowed us to move very fast in a very uh, cost-effective way. So instead of booking a photo shoot or booking something amazing and, and having to, to really think how we're going to portray this product in a nice way, we come up with a base picture, a nice layout, a nice way that we can later on Photoshop the product in this layout. So now we have a blank canvas that I retouch and Photoshop and create astonishing pictures that can be later on uh, pushed on advertisements. And to replicate this in a session would have been quite difficult. But with this, we get amazing results as well. And last but not least, TikTok uh, resources to improve your video. So I'm sure you have heard already about Creative Center, TikTok Creative Center, where you can find the latest songs, later hashtags, later trends to implement into your content. But I want to bring attention to also to TikTok Video Insights. This is where you can see all the frames of your, uh, of your videos and figure out which part of the video has the highest CTR. Because this means this is a very strong message to be used in all the, the, the creatives you, you are actually developing, be it in the hook, be it focusing on this part only. But this just tells you this is where people really got convinced that they should go to the website and buy. So just to summarize what are the do's and don'ts of